Welcome to Chapter 1 of Excel. This is a unit that's a little more interesting because most students have, haven't had a lot of experience with Excel. So I hope you'll find it to be um, not only useful but interesting as well. All right, so what is Excel? Um, before we begin, go ahead and pull this sheet that I have on the screen in front of you so that you can fill in the answers. I'll be sharing those with you throughout the, um, the videos. <clears throat> An Excel worksheet allows data to be summarized and charted easily. A chart conveys a visual representation of data. So in this chapter <clears throat> of Excel, we'll create a worksheet that includes a chart. And the data in the worksheet and the chart will be for a personal budget worksheet that has monthly uh, expenses and income on it. So that's what you're going to create during this video. Um, just to give you a little more information about that, our budget information is going to be for our pretend character, Bob Gleeman. He wants to estimate what his personal budget will look like for the year, so he's gathered together the information on how much he pays for various expenses and has a list of his current incomes. Now he wants an easy to read worksheet using this information to see how much he'll be ahead or behind each month to aid him in planning his budget. We're going to add a 3D pie chart um, so that we can show these expenses uh, as it relates to income for a 12 month period, making it a little easier. So the first step to, to creating an effective worksheet is to make sure you understand what is required. The first thing that we're going to do is, um, and let me actually pull this up really quickly. That is what an Excel worksheet is. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so now we're going to pull up Excel. There it is. When each of these um, boxes is a cell, and the easiest way to select a cell is to tap it, um, but you can also use arrow keys. So if I want to take my cursor and tap, then I move to an another cell, or I can arrow up and down. You know that a cell is selected or active when a heavy border surrounds the cell, and then the active cell reference appears in the name box. This is the name box right here. So A3 is currently selected. If I come over here, we know that L8 is currently collected, uh, selected. If I go down here, we know that J22. So you'll have your letter references up on the top and your number references at the bottom. Um, so worksheet titles and subtitles should be brief and meaningful. A worksheet title should include the name of the organization, department, or description of the content of the worksheet. A worksheet subtitle, if included, could include a more detailed description of the content. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to do is select cell A1, and we're going to enter personal budget worksheet. Then you can hit enter and it'll go to A2, and you'll want to enter monthly estimates. Okay, there's a couple things I wanna show you. One is, um, if I, I've just entered, I'm not formatting the worksheet at all initially. I'm just getting my data in the, um, into the worksheet. With Word, sometimes we wanna format before we type some of our stuff. But with Excel, that is not the case. You want to get your data in there. So for example, if I wanted to start typing something in B1, you'll notice that it covers up what I had in A1, but not really. If you look up here, A1 still exists. It just wouldn't show up until I widen out the column, which we'll handle later, okay? So I don't want you to be concerned when you start seeing things disappearing. That's, that's all right. Okay, let's go back to our teacher notes and make sure that we fill those in. Worksheet titles and subtitles should be as brief and meaningful as possible. All right, now it's time for us to go back to our Excel document and we need to enter our um, column titles. So all of these up the top, these are columns 
and this is where you'll put your column titles. Column titles always go um, horizontal. Okay. So we're going to um, click on A3 and we're going to type the word income. Then you're going to press the right arrow key rather than enter. If you hit enter, you'll go down. We don't want to go down. We want to do our column titles. So let's go back up here and you can either tab or you can right arrow key over. And then we're going to type January tab or right arrow February, March, April, May, June, July, oops, August. September, October, November, December. Okay. In, in the final column, which is N3, we're going to write the word total. Okay. Then we want to select cell A. Eight. So here, if we go down the A column and go to the eighth row, we know that we're in A8. So we're going to select that. And then we're going to type the word expenses. And again, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. Oops. Must have been lock. September, October, November, December, and total. Okay. The next step in developing the worksheet for this project is to enter the row titles for column A. So we're going to click on um, cell A4 and we're going to type the word wages. Hit enter and it'll go down. And then we'll type dividends. Hit enter again and type total. We're going to um, skip A7 and A8, go down to A9 and we'll type rent, food, tuition, books, entertainment, Car payment, gas, miscellaneous, and total. We're going to skip A18 and go down to A19 and we want net. All right, so now it's time to go and click on cell B4. And we're going to type $1,000.29. We do not need the dollar sign. We'll handle that later. So, and no comma. So 1,000.29. It is important to put the decimal. And then we um, we're going to go ahead and uh, enter that all the way across. There are um, several ways to do this that are easier. I'm going to ask you to do it this way for now. Make sure you don't put anything in the total column. We'll handle that later. I'm going to review and make sure I've got everything the way that it needs to be. Okay, everything looks fine. Uh, now it's time for us to click on cell B5. And you'll probably want to pause for a moment and make sure that you enter everything um, that I've entered here. When you're done with that, it's time now for us to start doing some calculations. So the next step in creating the worksheet is to perform calculations for our total rows. To do this, we'll use functions 
When you use functions, Excel perform, performs the calculations for you, which helps prevent errors and allows you to work more efficiently. This is one of the biggest challenges I find when students use Excel is they don't use the functions. They enter the data themselves, the totals, and that leaves room for more human error. So I always want you to use functions. All right, so totals are required for each month and for each budget item. So the first calculation is to determine the total income for the wages and dividends in the month of January in column B. So let's go back. So right here. That's our very first thing we're trying to figure out. To calculate this value in cell B6, Excel must add or sum the numbers in the cells B4 and B5. The sum function adds all the numbers in a range of cells. Okay, so that let's move back over to our teacher or to our student notes. The sum function adds all the numbers in a range. And a range is a series of two or more adjacent cells in a column or a row. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to, um, we're on, we've activated B6, and now we want to click the sum button, which is on the home tab right here. That's our sum button. And we want to um, click on sum, and you'll notice what happens is you get an equal sign, sum, and then in the parentheses is the range that it wants to add. The, um, the colon represents through, so it's saying add B4 through B5. Um, that can become important when you are doing larger ranges as we'll do soon, okay? You'll also see that the function shows up up here so that you can see it a little bit easier. Um, when you like that, then you go ahead and hit enter and it automatically sums that for you. You would do the same thing over here. Again, there's an easier way to do it, but I'm going to ask you to do it the way that I'm showing you so that you get used to using the sum function. Whoops. Now, did you guys catch what just happened? Um, if you look, and I was moving through it quickly and not paying attention, um, it automatically defaulted and said that they wanted that D6 would be adding B6 and C6. That is not true. We do not want these two to be added. I want uh, D4 and D5 to be added. So I can go in and change it to say D4 colon D5 and it highlights the box that I want to sum and then hit enter. Let's see what happens when we do this one sum and again it's moved it over to we, not the right spot so we want e4 and e, uh, e5 so e4 colon e5 now it's got the correct spot hit enter f4 and f5 G4 and G5. H4 and H5. I4 and I5. K4, K5, L4, L5, the other thing that you can do is you can highlight 
what you want. So M4, M5. So I just left clicked and then drug down so that it highlighted the box that I wanted to add. Okay. All right. Okay. Now I want you to go down to B17 and one more sum function down here. So we're going to do sum and we want to make sure it's got what we want, which is we want to add up rent. So B9 through um, miscellaneous expenses, B16, and that is correct, so we'll hit enter. I do not want you to fill this in just yet. I'm going to show you a shortcut. This, um, you'll notice that we've got this solid line around our active box, but you'll also notice that there is a big thick box right here on the bottom right. That is called an autofill. When my cursor is over it, it turns into a skinny plus sign. When I, if I want to quickly transfer a uh, formula or a function into the cells, then I can click on my autofill box when it turns skinny. I left click and I carry it across where I want it to fill and then I let up. And what happens is that it automatically, let's take a look at the formula. So right here, let's remind ourselves what the formula was, B9 through B16. So the formula for this, this cell right here should be C9 through C16. Let's see if it did it. C9 through C16, it did. So the next formula should be D9 through D16. And the next formula should be E9 through E16. So the autofill Excel automatically um, tries to anticipate what it was you're trying to do. When you copy formulas that include cell references, so if you copy something that says C5 to F5, Excel automatically adjusts the copied formula to fit its new position within the spreadsheet. And that is called a relative reference. That will become important in Chapter 3 of Excel because we will um, play around with that a little bit. So just remember relative references, meaning it's relative based off of where it changes, based off where the, um, the function is being placed in the spreadsheet. OK, and the other thing is the fill handle is a small black square located in the lower right corner of the heavy border around the active cell. You do need to be familiar with that language. We use the fill handle a lot in Excel. Let's go back to Excel. Now that we've got our rows mostly handled, the next step in building the worksheet is to determine the budget item totals for each budget item and total income and expenses in column N. So we want to focus right now on this column. To calculate these totals, we can use the sum function, much as it was used in the total budget items for each month. However, Excel, in our example, Excel will determine totals for all of the rows at the same time. So this is how you can do multiple totals at the same time. So we want to click cell N4. Um, and then we want to highlight, let's see, N4 through N6. And then we, so now we've got our whole section that we want to come up with totals highlighted. We're going to go back up to the sum button, sum, and there's our totals. Okay. We're going to repeat these steps for N9 through N17. So let's go ahead and select N9, run it down to N17, come up here, hit sum and it'll total everything up for us. I'm double checking a few things. All right. Okay, so now we've got this, this, row, this uh, 19th row that has to be completed. The net for each a month, for each month, which appears in row 19, is equal to the income less um, or minus the expenses. So when you take all your income and once you subtract out expenses, you have your net, which is what's left over. So what we need to do is um, select cell B19. So let's activate just that cell. And we want to type equal. 
and that's in the um, top right corner of your uh, keyboard. And we want to take B6 and then subtract B17. So we want this total from B6, which is our total January income, and we want to subtract our total expenses. You have to, Excel requires an equal sign in order for it to understand you're putting in a function. If you just type in B6 minus B17, it won't under, it just thinks you're typing text. It doesn't understand you're typing um, a function. So we'll hit enter and there is our total. That's our net, what's left over. Um, we will use our fill handle, our autofill to move this all the way over. Okay, we're going to pause here and I'll create a second video so you can uh, end it now.